Here's a question. How do you safely solder in a wall or down in your floor joist bay without catching the entire house on fire? I've got a ton of really great tips that'll help you out. And I think today's video is going to be helpful if you need to fix a water leak or if you want to swap out all the plumbing in a bathroom, for example, and use something like PEX A. In this bathroom, I wanted to swap out all of the copper because it was getting ready to pinhole leak everywhere. That's a completely different story, and I'm going to show you what that copper looked like in a moment. But down here in this joist bay, we have our PEX A adapter fittings. And look how close they are to the drywall. They're like literally an inch, inch and a half off of the drywall. Now I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions about why I converted from PEX A to copper, but check this out. All these little green spots are potential leak points, pinhole leak points for this copper. You can see it's labeled in red. It's type M copper. Typically you should be using type L. It's much, well not much, but it's thicker than type M. And there's a big problem in our area with excessive amounts of chlorine in the water system, uh, which is scary in and of itself. But all the copper is starting to corrode because it's over 40 years old. And so I decided to swap out all the copper in this bathroom with PEX A. Everything that I could see, I just pulled out. And this is evidence as to why that is a great idea. These are pretty much all the tools that I use for the copper part of this project. This is the auto cut tool, my favorite cutter. And the reason why is it's tiny. Look how small that is. Fits in tight spots. Definitely comes in handy when your copper is like an inch off of the drywall. So the reason why I like this, and I'll show you, it just, it just goes right on the pipe. And then you collapse it. And then there's also an arrow on here. This might be a little bit hard to see, but the arrow is just a direction that you spin the cutter. So for example, the arrow is pointing in this direction. All I'm gonna do is twist it. And then after about 10 twists, you have a cut pipe. Now at this point, some people make the mistake of saying like, okay, I'm ready, you know, now I can go ahead and solder. Well, you can't, you gotta do two additional things. You gotta deburr the inside and the outside of the copper pipe. And for that, you're gonna have to use a deburring tool. Now, there are a lot of different ones out there, but this, this one right here is my favorite. Again, you can see how small it is. It fits in tight spots. And you can deburr both the inside and the outside of the pipe with this. So I always start with the inside and I like the, do this probably like, you know, 10 times. Everybody has their personal preference. But what happens is you deburr the inside of the copper pipe and then you gotta deburr the outside. So there, there's a cone on this side and then you can see the cone is the op is just really a depression on this side. So those little ridges then deburr the outside of the copper pipe. And the reason why this is done is because of a few different reasons. You don't want any burrs on this that could disrupt the flow inside the pipe. Disrupting flow can lead to more pinhole leaks, which everybody's getting in this area. And also if, if you have to put this together with another fitting that has a rubber gasket, you could potentially cut that. So for example, shark bites are popular with DIYers. And if you slice through the O-ring and the shark bite because of the burr, now you're gonna get a leak. So always deburr the inside and the outside of the copper pipe. So this tool is great. Now the next thing you need to do is clean the outside of the pipe and you can use something like emery cloth for that. So this is just emery cloth. You can get it at any home store. You can go to a plumbing supply house. Uh, personally, I like supplyhouse.com too, which is awesome. But let me go ahead and clean this. Now I'm just, I'm just using one of these scrap pieces of type M. And I really wanna make this shine. So I just pinch the emery cloth between the pipe and my thumb and my finger. When you're down in a joist bay, you know, it's gonna be a little bit harder to do it this way, obviously, so you can take the cloth and move it back and forth. But you really want the copper to shine like so. So this is nice and clean. And normally I take this a step further by using like a, a nylon grip pad, but that can be a little bit overkill. But you just want it to look nice and shiny. At this point, now what you want to do is take your fitting. So you want to prep your fitting. This is a PEX-A 
adapter for half inch pipe. So for example, this just slides onto the copper pipe and now I can convert from my copper to my PEX A. So PEX A is different than PEX B because it uses cold expansion. I'm just gonna use a wire brush, spin that like, you know, 10, 15 times inside the fitting. So we're just roughing this up. Then I like to just make sure there's nothing in there. So you want these to be clean. You don't want to touch these with your hand because you'll get oil off your hand onto the, onto the copper and in the fitting. That's a no-go, that's no bueno. From there, we're gonna be using our flux. And this is OD H2O water-soluble flux. And the reason why I recommend this is because you don't have to flush out the system because it's water soluble. So that's a huge deal. Uh, you don't wanna have to flush out the system if at all possible, especially residential, right, in a home. So some tips on this. With flux, when you open up this small container, there are salts in here and you wanna use a clean acid brush. The big deal is you wanna mix this up and you also wanna look for any kind of contaminants inside the flux. So for example, I have something like right there. So I'm just gonna wipe that off. So you wanna mix up the flux and you want it to look and have a, a creamy consistency like this, right? And you don't need that much flux on the pipe. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my acid brush. Obviously if I'm down in the floor, I can't spin the pipe. So you have to get around the pipe using the brush but you only need like a half inch of flux on this and you don't need some crazy amount on there the flux is going to pull the solder into the fitting all right so it just looks like this and you want to make sure you don't have any hairs on the pipe from your brush that's also very very important so when i go to set this down i'm actually like if, you, if I was doing this and I wasn't down in the floor, the pipe is gonna be obviously held in place for me. But if I was holding the pipe like this, I'm gonna set it down on something that supports it so that the flux isn't getting contaminated by whatever's on this plywood. So that's another tip. But whenever we take our fitting here, again, I'm just gonna spread some flux in there. I'm basically looking to coat the entire inside of that fitting. All right. Now what you do is you take this and because this for me was coming out of the joist, I had to put my fitting on. So I put the fitting onto the pipe and then I just twist it. And that helps make sure that the flux is on the full surface of the fitting and the pipe. Now at this point, you may think you're done. You're good to go. If you wanna make this look as clean as possible, there is an extra step, super easy, super straightforward. So you just take a clean cloth like this and you wipe off all the excess flux that's on the pipe and the fitting itself. Because after all the flux, you, that's really just attracting basically through the solder. So you don't need any of the solder to be on the fitting on the outside of the fitting. You want it to be between the fitting and the pipe. So I'm just wiping off all the excess flux here. So at this point, I am ready to solder this together. But then the question becomes, how do you do that without burning up the floor or the drywall? And I didn't mention one thing that really helps out with this process. I'm gonna show you that now. This is what you need. It's the OD Flame Protector Pad. It's been used a lot, and you've probably seen it in many of my videos on Instagram or on YouTube Shorts. But basically what this does is protect your drywall or wood from the flame and prevent those materials from catching on fire. So basically what I'm gonna do is, to mimic what I did down in the floor joist, I'm gonna put a piece of half-inch drywall on the floor and then we'll put our flame protector pad over top of that. So one thing I forgot to mention, whatever pipe you're using, it's, well, it's helpful to bend the solder to that pipe 
diameter. So this is a little bit more than a half inch, but I was trying to bend this into a half inch bend. And once this gets used up to right about there, I know that I've pretty much fed enough solder into the joint and I'm, I'm done. So again, you can see how close we are to the drywall. I'm gonna focus on the pipe first and then the fitting. Hopefully you can see this, but once I'm done with the soldering process, look closely to see how the solder changes from a dull gray to, I'm sorry, a shiny gray silver to a dull gray. That's when it starts to really set up. So we'll focus on the pipe then the fitting. And I'm gonna go from below. Okay. Get that out of there. So watch closely here. It's starting to change. So it's going from like silver to dull gray. And that's how I know it's really starting to set up. So again, I'm gonna just hold this here. I'm not gonna touch this for a few seconds. And now what we'll do is we'll just wipe this off. And I'm okay having a little bit of a drip on the bottom there because that clearly indicates that, you know, I have enough solder in that joint. So let's go ahead and remove this. And again, you can see that this isn't affected at all. We'll get, we'll actually raise the camera up and we'll show you from above all in one shot that this is fine and the lumber is okay too. So we'll raise this up and then you can see, look, everything is good. So no burning of any of the materials in this area, which is terrific. I probably should have mentioned this tip at the beginning of the video, but anytime you're working with a torch and flame, make sure that you have a bucket of water and a sponge to extinguish any fire. Better yet, use a fire extinguisher. If you do have questions about the tools and materials I use, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to help you out in any way. And also if you're doing a bathroom remodel, and you want step-by-step -step help and you want to cut down on your cursing during your project, check out my courses over at homerepairtutor.com. They're awesome and I definitely guarantee you they'll help you out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the comments.